Okay, so um, okay, you know one of the things uh, what I want uh, to say, I come from um, addictions background, and there are certain things which, um, if I were to choose them, would disconnect me. Um, I'll, I'll, rephr I'll rephrase that. If I was to choose something to try and get payoff out of it, um, it would disconnect me. Uh, let, let's take the word. There's one thing like things happening when I'm when one is in the observer, and one doesn't want a payoff out of the thing. I'm, talking, I'm going to talk about donuts, but donuts could equally be a person. You know, like let's say there's this person who I know is not good for me. You know. You know, uh, uh, so uh, I'm trying to think of it because I've mostly cut out people who, who who are not not good for me. But if there was a person who was not good for me, um, then it would be like uh, you know, and I got I got payoff out of that. But what do I mean by payoff? I mean it's like uh, I get a hit from them. I get a kind of a um, a payoff out of them. And not only that, it's one thing, but and they were at a, at a um, they were at a very low vibration. When I, when I mean a low vibration, I don't know what I'm saying. I think there's one thing about people who are choosing to be on a spiritual path and are working on that stuff, on their stuff. They always have a good vibration, but some people have not chosen a spiritual path, um, and so they can be at certain vibrations. And when you choose that. Okay, I'm going to waffle on lots of tangents because I haven't got the thing I'm talking about very clearly. But there's a thing of, um, uh, okay, I'm going to talk about trying to rescue people. Yeah, I'm going to try rescuing people. Rescuing people is one of the, one of the very strong collective archetypes, which I would say um, is the idea of there's a me and you're suffering, I'm going to save you, you know. This is, uh, you, um, I mean, classically in 12 steps, they call it codependency or, or love addiction, are the two classical words, codependency or love addiction. And it's, the, and it's not a good term. It's not a good term. It's not a good thing. It's not a good vibration. Trying to save another person, it's, it's a thing of one has an, a, per, a personal attachment and a personal investment in trying to save that person. And when it becomes at the level of dependency, you know, it's like um, it's a very, very, it's a very low vibration because it's like um, uh, it's very uh, your vibration has gone very, very low, and you've got to realize that the only thing that can save them is the absence of you. <laughs> you know, which is very, it's just a hilarious paradox. So, you know, so if I was like, oh, I see, oh, there's this poor person, I'm going to save them and rescue them. Well, as soon as I, as soon as I, you know, they're so meaningful to me and they're so special to me, I'm going to save them. Um, mothers uh, can often have this very, very, very strongly. Um, also, you know, romantic relationships, this can, you know, we've been going out for like 20 years and uh, now you're having a bad time, I'm going to rescue you. But often this personal attachment has built up. They become very, very special and meaningful. And then one can almost project, the projection has occurred that they are the source of your life. You wouldn't be able to live without them. So really, it's not really love. It's actually what's happening there is like for one's own need, because now they're projected with the source. This happens in, in, in 12 Step Hershey's where we get people so I've just broken up with someone, I'm feeling suicidal because I can't live without them, you know. Or they'll do anything to try and get that person back. Now what's going on there is dependency at a very, very strong level. Uh, so it's actually what's happened there is if, if, that, if someone is trying to save someone or need somebody at that level of dependency, you have no power to rescue them because you're so much in your obsession that yeah, that uh, there, there's there's no light that comes through. Does that? I don't know if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, so if you really want to save them, you need to let them go. Which is a paradox. Mm -hmm. Which is, is a paradox. It's like 
oh my god, you know, like, please don't eat another donut, you know, <laughs> whatever it is, you know, or don't, don't do that thing, or don't hit your head with a hammer again, or whatever it is, or some people, whatever, you know, so, but then with that energy, you're actually, if you really love them, you have to let them go, which is a, it's a paradox, you see, so, um, uh, which is what I've used, I used this with my mother, you know, which is like, well, I really love my mother, but then I, there was the paradox of like, if I want to save my mother, I have no power to save her, you know, because it's personal, you know, you know, I'm going to rescue my mother, so, but I do love my mother, so I'm going to completely, so the way to rescue my mother is to transcend my mother, is to completely let her go, 100%. I, I, I went to, I'm going to make her meaningless. She's a, she's a mug. You know, she's a teacup. There's nothing she can do or say that can, that, that can trigger me. That was like, I mean, I'm not saying that took a day or so, that took a few years. But there was like the mission to transcend and that for me is like my highest form of offering love to my mother, was I want to transcend her. It sounds very bizarre. You know, I'm going to make, I love you so much, I'm going to make you into a teacup. You know, you're going to mean nothing to me. <laughs> and actually that was like, uh, but that was a lot of work, because there was a lot of, a lot of uh, hot buttons and a lot of triggers to do. But I knew then, I knew that the power of the saints was that they have impersonal love. They don't have personal love any longer. That's why when, you know, you walk in front of a saint and your cancer's gone, vanished. That's not because they love you personally. They have no attachment to you. You know, the enlightened teachers that, can, that have access to the cities, that can walk on water or be two places at the same time, you cannot, have, you cannot have a story or a personal attachment. Those level of miracles do not happen. Where they're, you know, so... If I sort of, if I'm saying to a person like, oh, you're so special, you're so meaningful, I can't live without you. I was looking forward to meeting you the whole week and you're going on a holiday, I feel so sad. Well, you can see there is a level of baggage and payoff mm. and projection that's going on there. Oh, I'm crying, you're leaving, you won't be back till tomorrow. You know, it's like, you know, and oh, you've got a cold. Well, I'll, let me go to the chemist and buy 300 remedies for you. It's like, you know, so I can fix you. So that kind of thing, that energy uh, is very strongly personal. So sometimes the big, you know, so now there's one way, one way is to, like I said, make them meaningless, transcend them, go to the observer. I mean, you can be in a relationship and transcend the person in a relationship uh, as well. Uh, personally, um, I could do that with someone I was attached to, but I say it's a lot of work. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense. But, you know, like, um, uh, I often don't, I often, like, run away from situations because I'd rather not transcend them if I don't have to. Sometimes life forces you to, you can't escape from this person. It's like life will, like, go, nope you are not going to escape from this person. The only option for you is to transcend it. And if, like, if the universe does that for me, then I'll transcend it, because I know that, yep. What, do, what does transcending a person look like? I mean, it sounds all very cosmic, but what oh, does sorry. transcending that person? Are they okay. still around? Do they disappear? Do they vanish from the face of the earth? Do you vanish from the face of the earth? Okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you for asking. I, I sometimes think people understand what I'm talking about. Um, no, it's a very good point. There's, the, you know, transcending, it's a great, actually great question, fantastic question, I love that. There's different elements, you know, when I transcend a person, there's different elements. There's the feeling element, there's the, there's the things that they do and say that trigger me. Uh, there's their facial expressions, um, there's, um, uh, you know, um, there is the thing which I always try and, which I share in the group, it's like, I can see, like, let's say I'm, you know, my favorite person is the person who wears these brown black glasses, you know, and, uh, and, but then I'll know that as soon as that person leaves the room, if I'm missing them or I'm having thoughts about them, then I know that there is a projection of specialness onto them. So, so I'll, and it's like I use my own perception of what I miss about them or the feelings that come up 
or things I like about them or dislike about them. I tr so you transcend the dualities. You're transcending things you like, uh, which are the attractions, and you're transcending uh, the versions to them. Uh, so I really like that this person is funny, but I want to transcend that because that's something that's pulling me to that person, remembering that person. But I also want to transcend, I don't like that person because um, of the, why well, don't I like them? I don't like it because they fidget too much or whatever it is, you know. So, so I, can, I can transcend both the attractions and my versions, which, which ha I've made them special in good ways and bad ways. The course does talk about, I was actually doing, I'm on the early course lessons again, and the course sort of says like also, let, there is no big or small, let go of everything, no good or bad, you know, it's not like, I'm just going to hold on to the tiny good things and bad things. It's okay, I was going to say, I wanted to say a couple of specific things, but please turn the camera off for yep. a few minutes.